Hey guys, this is Austin Stone with Tactical Approach Outdoors. Today we're going to talk about a common terrain feature in an agricultural type of setting called fingers, so stay tuned. So when I'm talking about a finger, I'm talking about any kind of cover that's connecting one major woodlot to another. It could be more wooded, it can be like a fence line that's overgrown and real brushy. This one here has a ditch running through it, maybe has a little bit of creek running through it. Anything to give the deer some kind of cover moving from one woodlot to the next. Most deer, especially in pressured states, are not going to move out in open fields. And a lot of times, even in these fingers, they're not going to stay on the outside edge of that finger. They're going to be right smack dab in the middle of it. So, they can be difficult to hunt at the same time. So, I'll show you this one here has a lot of underbrush. There's not a lot of big mature trees. So, what, how you're going to have to hunt it is you're going to have to get on the ends and just find yourself a good mature tree and set up as best you can where most of the movement is going to funnel together and you can get a lot of shots coming in and out of that finger. Really that's the best way to hunt it anyways is getting as close to the ends as possible unless you see some kind of sign along the mid middle of that finger that is a big draw. Maybe it's a big oak has a bunch of scrapes on it so you can you can work on that to kind of set up but the best kind of setup is actually to set up on the ends and the wind can be very predictable as well. You can use these open fields to your advantage. So you can set up on either side of that finger depending on which direction the wind's blowing and even on front to back. So you know say a north wind coming we've got other prevailing winds. If we've got a straight north and south kind of finger that's going to be very difficult to hunt. Okay so you're going to have to sit really off to the side to keep from your wind blowing straight down the finger and spooking everything out. If it's more of a east to west finger, that's really easy. You can get off to the side and let your wind blow into the field. That's not too bad to hunt. At the ends of the fingers, what I would look for is I'd look for a lot of rubs and scrapes in particular. Scrapes are the best to hunt. So if you can find some big oaks with some big scrapes there on the end, a lot of those deer are going to come out of that main woodlot, hit this finger, they're either going to just continue past it, or they're going to actually going to go down the finger. So when you've got cruising bucks, they're just going to move into these covered areas, any type of position that has converging movement, that's what we're going to look for. So this finger right here, there's a tree probably 50 yards away from me at the moment. I would rather get right in this type of area, but that's okay if I can't get set up. The best tree is back there, and I can still get most of my shots on this finger, feeding into it and coming through it from that tree. So that's how I would actually pick a tree coming into this spot. There could be times when you actually have to set up a ground blind, really brush it in, and hunt these fingers because there is no tree. So you might have to get a little bit of creative but that's okay. So these are great places to look for deer, look for bedding. If you don't have big massive woodlot areas to hunt and also even if you do these are great places to focus in on. They could be overlooked spots and those are the kind of spots that those big bucks really like to use are the overlooked spots because people aren't there. So Dakota actually shot a really great buck out of a finger very much like this one this past season with his bow but it was a more mature wooded type of finger it had a lot of oaks and everything in it a lot of scrapes a lot of rubs and the bucks were very active in that little finger 
he just had to get in there before any other pressure got to it and run to that spot. So he did and ended up being very successful. So these are great things to look for when you're trying to key in on funnels and pinch points. So thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button to keep track of all of our next videos coming up in this tree stand placement series. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.